my mother to have. I have heard how great God is. He is so faithful. He will be there if you call upon him. And I said, God, I serve a Savior like that. One who cares for me, for me. He cares how I feel. He cares everything about me. And folks, don't ever forget that. God loves you. He cares for you. He cares about you. All you have to do is call upon him. And I know that because it wasn't for him. I wouldn't be here today, and I'm so thankful for his love. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, and, uh, you know, when we, when we walk and follow Christ, we have life abundantly, don't we? Amen. I mean, um, the agenda of Jesus is they might have life, and have it abundantly, right? Yeah. It says in John 10.10 10, that the thief cometh not but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. Uh, he wants to rip you off. Amen. But Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. And so uh, this morning's uh, message is, I, I just love how God puts together a, ser uh, a service. You know, from the Sunday school teaching to to the sermon, to the worship, to the prayer, I, I love how the, the Holy Spirit puts it together. And the uh, I, you know, and so here's the title of the uh, uh, the uh, sermon: cultivating the abundant life. Cultivating the abundant life. So let's say our purpose statement together: whatever it takes to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. That's what it's about. So the first responsibility of the church toward the individual is to bring them to Christ, right? And we call that, what, evangelism. We want to bring uh, lost sinners to Christ and uh, that they might be saved and receive, what, a new life in Christ Jesus, right? And so we have a new life uh, in Christ Jesus. Um, and... Um, and it, it, so when Jesus was on earth, he gave his disciples new life, and then he cultivated that life in them. Okay, now that cultivation of the new life is called discipleship. So evangelism and discipleship go hand in hand. Now the reason why uh, in our churches, uh, a lot of times that people are falling away, a lot of times that people, they come in, they say, well, I think I'll try Christianity. They come, walk the aisle, and maybe they even get baptized, and then you never see them again. And a lot of the reason why is because, uh, well, they tried it, and it didn't work for them. Why? Because the church did not cultivate the abundant life in them. Like I said, this ought to be a fertile ground for people to have a, a, to, to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we need to, uh, we need to have that responsibility Responsibility, and uh, you have heard me say that uh, the two responsibilities of the church are number one, reach lost people, and then to teach Christians to act like Christians. Right? I mean, and that that second one's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, you know. Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, the thing is, is and and a lot of times when uh, when we see God save somebody and they have the old uh, grave clothes on and, and different things like that, we say, okay, God, that's good that you saved them, but I don't want to get around them. Because they're still in their old flesh. They're still in their old grave clothes. But we have to uh, make, uh, make that adjustment in our own minds, right? Amen. And so um, uh, the Bible makes it clear that a sinner out of Christ is dead and trespasses and sins in Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And it says, you has he quickened uh, and so, um, now he, that word quicken means made alive. So some of your translations will even say, you that he made alive, uh, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Now, uh, we can get those ill spirits in the church, can't we? And a lot of times... Uh, these ill spirits can come into the church and they can work in the children of disobedience. And so uh, 
Verse 3 it says, Among whom also we had our conversation in times past. So we, we've all been there in the, in the lust of the, our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of, of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now, uh, a lot of people, they want to get in touch with the natural man. You know, we just had this uh, event in northern Nevada called Burning Man, and they, they want to get in touch with the natural man, and believe me, they do. And we need to understand that but the natural man has the wrath of God on them. We, the wrath of, so the wrath of man is on them by nature, the children of wrath, either, even as others. Now, the, the only thing that you can do with a dead man is to bury him. Right? Uh, the Bible also says that it is only Christ that can give life. 1 John 5, 12, He that hath the Son, uh, that's capital S-O-N, hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God, don't have no life. Hath not life. Okay? Pretty, pretty uh, simple. Alright? Now, when the sinner repents and turns to Christ in faith, receiving Him as the Savior and Lord, he receives life. After winning the sinner to Christ, it is the responsibility of the church to cultivate this life. Okay? We must lead individuals. Uh, I, and I'm going to give you three points today. We need to lead, uh, uh, lead individuals, number one, in the Lordship of Christ. We need to make Christ number one. The Lordship of Christ. Number two, we need to lead individuals in the importance of God's Word. And number three, we need to lead individuals to recognize the person of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You see, uh, a lot of times, you know, these, uh, these are uh, um, misrepresented in our churches and different things. And we don't keep the main thing the main thing. We go off of different programs and, you know, we, uh, we don't get in, involved in the lives of people because, uh, you know... Uh, uh, that, well, you know, we don't like that person or this person. Uh, and, but we need to cultivate that abundant life. Now, when Jesus rose up Lazarus from the dead in John chapter 11, it says that when Jesus called Lazarus out of the grave, he came forth out of the grave bound with grave clothes. And, uh, and Jesus told those that were there to loose him and let him go. All right? Now, uh, you got to get this picture in your mind. You know, uh, Jesus comes up, hey, roll that rock away and, <clears throat> you know, there's a big rock in front of this grave. And, and uh, you know, the sister of Lazarus says, uh, man, uh, you know, he's been dead four days. By now he, I like this word, stinketh, you know, in the King James. I tell my uh, wife that her dog stinketh every once in a while. But anyway, um, but anyway, uh, he, uh, that they roll the rock. Now, he could have just told the rock to get out of the way and the rock would have obeyed him, right? But he got people involved with opening that grave, okay? And then, he's the one that resurrected the life, and then he got people involved again when he said, loose him and let him go. Now, Jesus could have just done all of it if he wanted to, and that's what we expect Jesus to do. We just expect Jesus to do it all. But no, we need to get involved in the lives of people. You see, uh, he said, loose him and let him go. Let's go to John chapter 11, verse 39 through 44. John chapter 11. Verse 39. It says this, And Jesus uh, said, Take you away the stone. Martha, uh, the sister of him that was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Now, back then they didn't have the embalming and stuff, and, you know, you can get right after four days if you're not involved. Uh, you know, man. Uh, now, uh, especially in the summertime, you know. Now, I have to tell you this story. One time, you know, this uh, we had this uh, strange motorhome pull into the parking lot. And um, it was in the parking lot, kind of crooked. And, you know, we came out of service one night, and it was, you know, lights were on in as well. Somebody just uh, parked there, and then it was there. Wednesday night, to, uh, you know, to Wednesday uh, when we came and stuff like that. And so we're thinking, man, we've got to have this thing towed out of the uh, church parking lot, you know, because uh, we don't know if somebody, you know, about somebody. And um, uh, so anyway, uh, the, the uh, tow company, they, they, they weren't uh, towing that type of motor home. And 
So he says, well, is it open? I said, I don't know. We called the sheriff, and they looked inside. Well, we can't see nothing. So I go and open the door. There's a guy dead or the doornail in that motorhome, you know, and in the church parking lot, you know. And I'm saying, hmm, that's different. Um, <laughs> So I anyway, I called the sheriff department back. I says, uh, we got a slight problem. The, the motor home that you checked out earlier has a body in it. You know? And so anyway, but uh, it, it was a good thing. It was kind of cool though. It was a good thing. He didn't he didn't stink it too bad. You know, so but anyway, um, I don't know why I told the story, it's just a story. Here, it's a true story. But <laughs> all right. Now, uh, he'd been dead four days. Verse forty. Jesus saith unto her, uh, you know, this is Martha, the, the sister of Lazarus. Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Now, what's the glory of God? The glory of God is the resurrection. That's the glory of God. You see, that's the glory. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! And he that was dead came forth. And bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. And Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Now I'm going to go back a chapter. John chapter 10, verses 7 through 10. John chapter 10, verse 7. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go out and find pasture. The thief cometh not before to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just pray, Father God, that we get this today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There are those in the church that do not want to get around the one that still has the stench of death upon them or get around someone that still has the clothes of the old nature on them. You know, but the Lord Jesus works together with his people to cultivate the abundant life. Uh, to me, there's no greater joy than to see Jesus raise up an individual from the dead as he, uh, and as he uh, is raised, they must recognize some things about God. They, need, they must recognize the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's not the Baptist church uh, that you need to recognize. It is the Lordship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The believer or new convert must understand that it was none other than the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords uh, and the God of God which gave him life. Uh, it was not the Baptist church. It was Jesus. We need to understand that. He needs to realize that he belongs to Christ through redemption. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20 says what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. A lot of people say, well, I'm saved, you know, but I can, I can uh, you know, just uh, go about and, and uh, walk in the flesh and by the grace of God, He'll take me to heaven. No, it says glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. They're both God's. God has redeemed us through His precious blood, and you were bought with a price, You're not, and you're not your own. Now, modern Christianity wants all, uh, all the benefits of their own way, and they want a God that will serve them. I do not think that people realize anymore that it was Christ and only Him that snatched you out of the grave where you were dead and bound and going to hell. 
We need to understand that, you know, without Christ, uh, we were dead. Without Christ, uh, we are on, on our way to hell. I remember when uh, God saved me, I was on my way to hell. I was trying to go to hell. I'd have made it too if it wasn't a great, for the grace of God. You know what I'm saying? But God came down, and He's the one that redeemed my soul. He's the one that saved my soul. And I give Him glory at the, in the church today because He is the one that did the work. And I have to realize every day, just like every one of us, the Lordship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, the people today want a new way to get to God, but Jesus said that if you do not come in the door, then you're a thief and a robber. Yes. People today are looking for all kinds of different ways to get to God. They're trying to climb up some other way rather than uh, the way of the cross. They're trying to go through some other person than the person of Jesus Christ. They may be esteeming Mohammed or Buddha or Hare Krishna or Joseph Smith is the way to be saved. But I declare to you the word of the Lord today that Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved and shall go out and find pasture. Jesus is the only way to get saved. He is the only door that we can enter into. Sometimes the church gets sucked up into a, the erroneous error of believing that what the world preaches, that all roads eventually lead to heaven. No. Or if, uh, if uh, or it don't matter what door you go in as long as you are sincere in your, in your belief. No, it matters what door you go into. And I'm going to preach it. His name is Jesus. I'm going, it matters what door you are going in. Jesus is still the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and the God of Gods. He still has the name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Beloved, you have been bought with the price of the precious blood of the Lamb. And we need to recognize that we are to be loyal to Christ as Lord. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. We are also to render loving obedience to Christ. John 14, 15. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I love Jesus. You know, I've been guilty of that. Oh, I love Jesus, but I'm not keeping His commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Love is greater force than law. Love will cause a man to do more than the law requires. Love will cause us to go that second mile that Christ taught us about. Not only are we to teach the Lordship of Christ, number two, we are, we are to recognize the importance of God's Word. We are to recognize the importance of God's Word. You know, uh, a lot of uh, uh, churches, they just uh, want to say, well, you know, I, I want you to give me a good sermon, preacher, or something, and they, and they never get into the Word during the week. They, uh, they just come for an hour Sunday morning. That's, this is not enough word for you, folks. It's not enough. Okay? Uh, we need to recognize him. God's word is food for the soul. The, the Bible exhorts a believer to desire the word of God. Amen. Right? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, what, what, let, me, uh, let me ask, what do you desire? Where's your treasure? Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where's your treasure? Uh, you are to desire the Word of God. It says in 1 Peter 2.2, 2, as, uh, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. You see, you need to grow in, in your spiritual life. You, as we cultivate that spiritual life in you, you need to grow in your spiritual life. Otherwise, it's just the flesh working on the other side of the fence. Amen. And we have not changed our minds about the things of the flesh. We have not changed our mind about Jesus, the Lordship of Jesus. We still want to be in control and different things. And we have not changed our, our mind. But the Word of God will uh, convict our hearts. The Word of God will change our minds. It says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. That you may prove it is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know? And so uh, Deuteronomy 8.3, Jesus quoted this one to the devil. As he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee to know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. 
We don't just live by, by eating food. We don't just live by, you know, uh, entertainment and different things. We live in our spiritual life. We live by the very Word of God. In Job 23, 12, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. We need to understand the importance of God's word. In Psalm 19, 103, How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey unto my mouth. See, just like good food is essential for physical growth, the Word of God is essential for spiritual growth. The Bible also exhorts the believer to study the Word of God. Alright? Now, um, I know that the Lord has drawn me back to when I first, God first saved me, I would get along with Him in His Word. And I would mull over the Word. I'd meditate upon the Word. The Lord has drawn me back to that. Because here's what I did. Oh, I, you know, I'd veg out in front of the TV for a couple, three hours a night. You know, I got into, you know, uh, uh, you know, meditating on the, on the wrong things and different things like that. And God has drawn me back to this. And I mean, uh, I, I mean, I figured out the other day, a, a rock can hear. You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Jesus can make a rock cry out. He can make a rock hear too. It's in uh, 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 Joshua chapter twenty-four. If you want to look at it, because they had this covenant with a rock, and he says, "This rock is you know, this rock hears you. Here's this covenant." So, oh, Amen. never realized that before. Not only can he make a rock cry out, he can make a rock hear you. Hear your covenant. So, I like rocks. You know, you used to have a business uh, delivering rocks. You know, uh, I had this uh, I had this old half-ton Chevy pickup uh, square body. I had a winch behind the back window, and I'd put a ton and a half of rocks in there all the time. This half-ton Chevy pickup, and I'd go deliver them to landscapers and and different things like that. And I mean, I got acquainted with them rocks. You know. I knew how heavy they were. I knew, you know, kind of looking at them, uh, how how heavy they were by the iron content that was in them. And, and I mean, I just kind of, you know, through experience, uh, you know, mainly a lot of work, hard work, uh, getting those rocks on off that truck, uh, I found out about some rocks. And God likes rocks. And I like rocks. Anyway, I don't know why I said that. But anyway. <laughs> Pretty rocky, Pastor. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, the Bible also exhorts a believer to study the Word of God. 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul says to Timothy, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. How many times do you not know what to think about a certain situation in your life? Lord, I don't know what to think about this. I mean, stuff comes up, Right? But it says, a study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be shamed, rightly dividing the word of, of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. <coughs> you know? And a lot of times people take a verse out of context and they create a denomination on it or something. You know? <laughs> we need to study it. Amen. John 10, 9 says, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go out and find pasture. You're going to find where to eat good. Right? We're like little sheep. You know? As we're compared to little sheep, you know? I mean, I mean, uh, you know, we, uh, we follow the shepherd, right? And, um, you know, the shepherd, he takes care of us, right? He puts us in the sheepfold every night. And boy, you know, the, these trials come in our life, you know, and, and boy, they're overwhelming, right? And then uh, we figure out, man, we need to, we need to pray to the shepherd. And, and we even start sounding like sheep. Oh, God. You know, I mean. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're good. Sorry about that. Fever was bad. Sense of humor. All right. Now. Not only are we to desire the Word of God and study the Word of God, we are also we are also are to practice the Word of God. 
right? James 1, 21 and 22 says this, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be you doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now, if you just come in, well, that was a good good sermon, Pastor, or whatever. It really touched my heart. Well, I, okay, that's good. But what are you going to do about it? Are you going to apply it to your life in practice? And um, that's where discipleship comes in, right? That we teach people to follow Christ. You see, I exhort you today to get into a weekly Bible study and to study the Bible every day. Study the Bible. I want you to have ESP. E for eat the Word of God. S for study the Word of God. And P for practice the Word of God. I want you to have ESP. Study, eat, and or eat, study, and practice. All right. Now, uh, practicing the Word of God includes living holy lives. Now, let's go to 1 Peter Peter 1, 1 Peter 1. If you're looking for 1 Peter, it is right before 2 Peter. But I'll give you some help finding that. Alright. It's on page... Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, 2 Peter chapter 1, 13. It says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope, uh, to the end for grace that is to be brought into you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, that's being obedient uh, to the Lord, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but he, and, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be you holy, for I am holy. Alright, that's Old Testament, that's New Testament. So that includes living holy lives. Praying fervently. Jesus said that men always ought to pray and not faint. And not only praying fervently, we need to witness faithfully. You may, uh, you may uh, somebody said one time, you may be the only Bible someone ever reads. Amen. They're not going to read, maybe, you know, uh, but you may be the only Bible somebody ever reads. And finally, we are to recognize the person of the Holy Spirit. We are to be taught to recognize the person of the Holy Spirit. A lot of times, you know, we read the Word of God and we don't know what it says, but as the Holy Spirit gives us revelation, we recognize His voice. We recognize the voice of God. If the first two truths are believed and practiced, of the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the recognition of the importance of the Word of God, we will learn to hear His voice and not trust the voice of anything else. Because the sheep is not going to trust the voice of anything else, right? It's going to trust the voice of the shepherd. Verse uh, John 10, 27 through 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The Father which gave them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to pluck them out of the Father's hand. I mean, you can go on in that, that John chapter 10. It's a wonderful uh, chapter. And, um, uh, and me and my Father are one, he says after that next verse. Now, until we put Jesus in his proper place in our hearts and minds and realize the Lordship of Christ, we will not grow spiritually. We will not grow spiritually. And this is what the church has been guilty of. We haven't grown spiritually. We've been put on programs. We've made it about worship styles. We've made it about architecture. We've made it about everything except Jesus. And what we need to do is uh, we need to get back to what Jesus said. And that's, what, and that's how I'm going to lead this church. We're going to get back to what Jesus said. It's not a program. It's in, it's, it's in here. It's in this right here. It's, and we're going to uh, we're going to get back to that. And until we put Jesus in His proper place in our hearts and minds and realize the Lordship of Christ, we will not grow spiritually. 
Not recognizing the importance of God's word will cause us to starve to death. Many churches are starving to death. And not hearing the voice of the Spirit will cause Jesus to remove his candlestick from our midst, according to Revelation. Beloved, we are not at the place where we ought to be yet. But by cultivating the abundant life, we may have all things and experience God in a way we never thought possible. Because what he's able to give us overly above what we ever, 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 uh, are able to think or ask, right? By the church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, we come up here and we call for decisions. And then, uh, okay, somebody comes and they make a decision for Christ. And then we say, well, that, well that's good. We got them into the church. And so the, they sign the Baptist card and then we kind of forget about them. You know, but uh, we need to be, as a church, body function, we need to be about what Jesus said. We need to be about what Jesus said in, in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 28. The last thing he told his disciples, Go ye therefore into all the world, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, is it? let me ask you this. Is it our job, or is it Jesus' job, to grow the church. Jesus' job to grow the church. Our job is to teach all nations to follow Him. You see, the growth of Friendly First Baptist Church doesn't depend on me trying to talk somebody into something. If I can talk you into something, the devil will talk you back out of it. The, the way Friendly First Baptist Church is going to grow is by the recognition of the Lordship of Christ, the importance of God's Word, and hearing His voice through the Holy Ghost. And that's what we need to teach. Now, I want to challenge you to be in the Word every day. And, here, you know, just get, get alone. Get away from the TV. Get away from the spouse. You know, get away from the kids. Uh, you know, and everything. I know it's hard for Mike and Amy because they live in this little trailer, but... You know, uh, but anyway, uh, get uh, get away on your own and say, Lord, I want you to show me your ways. Lord, I want you to give me your spirit. I want you to give me your understanding, your knowledge, and and your wisdom. Because Lord, quite frankly, I don't have it, and I need you to give that to me. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God, right? And wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. You know, and so uh, uh, let's, let's do what God has to say. Now, if there's any decisions that need to be made this morning, decisions about maybe you want to receive Christ as your Savior, uh, and that, that would be good. Um, uh, that would be, a, you know, a, a, a life-changing uh, eternal thing that you can do. Um, maybe you need to uh, follow Lord baptism. Um, we baptize people here uh, at uh, Fernley First Baptist and uh, says repent and be baptized, every one of you. So that's all of us. Or uh, maybe you need to make a decision about joining this body. You know, uh, this is the uh, extension of the body of Christ right here in Fernley, Nevada, right? And so we, uh, if you make that decision, you can join this uh, body of uh, believers um, and uh, make those kind of decisions. Maybe, maybe like me, you just need to come back and re, you know rededicate your life and you know you know just say, Lord, what a fool I was for you know not having faith in you and and heart my heart getting hardened and, and things like that. And then you know I'm just like everybody else. Yeah. You know I get I get into trials and you know and and, uh, and stuff like that and. And, uh, you know, uh, start thinking wrong. And then I have, to get, I, have to, I have to get in back into the Word and say, Lord, I, I need you to direct my thoughts and path, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Amen. Amen. Anybody got a word to say before we dismiss this morning? I do. All right.
you know, it's written, seek me, seek me first and all things will be added unto you. And the Lord said, I'll give you the, desi the desires of your heart. But when we do that, we find out the desires of our heart is to love Jesus. Not these other things that we think our desires are, but our true desire is to love Jesus. Just for the exact reason he created us was to love him. And when that happens, who can be against us? Yes, amen. Oh, the, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbors yourself. You know, a lot of times we uh, we don't make it about the Lord. We make it about how we feel, and sometimes how we feel about somebody else. You know, so a lot of times I've, I've seen people get mad at me. If you can just imagine that, I, you know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, some people, you know, uh, and, and, you know, they, they walk away. I've had walking out of the church door cursing me and stuff. Oh, okay. Um, you know, so, uh, but, you know, when you, when you stand for what's right, uh, there are people that's not going to agree with it, you know. And, uh, you know, we don't have a position to defend we have a revelation to declare, and his name is Jesus, right? So let's keep on. Uh, the main thing is to keep the main thing. The main thing. Amen. Anybody else got a word? Yes, would you? A song came to me as we were closing the service, and church, please catch up when I start singing. Oh, how I love Jesus. Raise your hands if you mean it. Oh, how I love Jesus. been a good day in the Lord, you know, uh, the Word has been ministered, but they, uh, the ministry of the Word is, is, is uh, not necessarily the main thing. The main thing is Jesus, that we exalt Him uh, in, in our presence, that we uh, put in the minds of people and train people the importance of God's Word, the Lordship of Christ, and, and to hear the voice of the Spirit. Amen? Let's go to the Lord in uh, prayer. Yes? If we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. Yeah, yeah. It says, draw near to the Lord, he'll draw near to us. Cleanse our hands as, as, as sinners and purify our hearts, you double minded. And a lot of times, you know, we can, um, in, our, in our churches, we can get into sin. We can get into double mindedness, and the, and the world is always there pushing double mindedness. You know, we, you need to think like the world, too. No, you don't. We need to think like Jesus, okay? And so, uh, so, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And tell the devil, neener, neener. So there you go. <laughs> I'm going to be like Jesus, right? Yeah. Amen. All right. Let's go, Lord, in, uh, in prayer. Father, we uh, call upon you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for, for this body of believers. I thank you, Lord, that, that Lord, we can come and just uh, worship you. Lord God, I lift you up. And Lord, I pray, Father God, that Lord, uh, that we would uh, recognize the Lordship of you. I, I, I pray that we would realize the importance of your word, and I pray that we would hear. Give us ears to hear, Lord, so we, we can hear the voice of your Spirit. And Lord, I pray, Father God, that Lord, uh, to, to come before you and repent of our sins and purify our hearts as being double-minded and Lord I pray that we would draw near to you that you might draw near to us and Lord all power is given unto you in heaven and in earth and you're still with us today even till the end of the world and Lord I thank you and praise you this day in Jesus' name Amen, Amen. God bless you until we meet again <laughs>